are here at Track and Field Black History. We're talking with Wallace Spearman, legit one of the greatest sprinters to ever touch the track. <laughs> and um, so, Wallace, tell us what you're doing here at Prefontaine. Uh, well, recently, uh, I just retired from running, and the transition was a little hard, but I found my way and I, I got a job with USA Track and Field as the Associate Director of Athlete Services. So, a lot of the problems that I face as an athlete, I get to fix them now. So, I'm really excited about it. Nice. So, you mentioned the problems. I mean, you had tons of success as an athlete, right? But what are some of those problems that you're trying to fix in this sport right now with athletes? Well, I uh, never really saw a lot of conversation between some of the executives and the decision makers in the sport and the actual athletes. Um, one thing that I've had to learn is basically the business world. So you have to learn how to speak their language. As athletes, sometimes we voice our concerns, but they're, they fall on deaf ears simply because we don't speak their language. So I've dedicated the last what, 10 years of my life to learning that language. And the CEO now, Max Siegel, felt like it was time. He felt like I had proven myself enough to you know, start speaking up and sit in some of these conversations and these meetings. So here I am. Nice. And how do you feel about the work you've been doing, of course, as you transition you know, from the track to what you're doing now? How do you feel that impact has been, made, um, has been coming along with the athletes now? Well, honestly, I'm still friends with a lot of the athletes right now. And if I feel like if they're happy, then I'm doing a good job. And if I feel like if they're voicing the same concerns, then I'm not being effective at my job. So. Uh, one thing I'll say is leveraging relationships and networking. I have to make sure I'm relevant, you know, in the business world and make sure I'm still relevant with the athletes. So you see me out here now and it seems like I'm having fun, but I'm just having casual conversations and just kind of grabs, you know, some of the concerns and the problems that they have. And then whenever I go back to the national office, I'll be able to voice those whenever we have meetings. So <laughs> splitting, splitting the worlds, but. I mean, I love it. It's what I've been, basically what I've done my whole career. Yeah, very dope. Um, and then going a little bit back into your career, you were one of the most like, I don't know, eccentric. You had that, you know, <laughs> you were on the track, like people knew Wallace Spearman was on the oh, track, for sure. right? And so talk about why you were able to do that. And like, if you see some of that translating into some athletes now. Well, I mean, yeah, you definitely see it with some of the athletes now. I mean, I watch even from Raven Saunders, who's very personal, you see a lot of her personality. Fred Curley, you see a lot of his personality. Uh, Sandy, uh, Sandy Morris, you see her go out and pole vault, and you see a lot of her personality. So yeah, you see that right now. I'm definitely not the only one. As far as myself, whenever I competed, I was one of the really close with Usain Bolt, and if you knew him, yeah, he definitely was a, a showman. <laughs> so you know, he, he and I used to go out and have fun, and honestly, some of that was for a show, and some of that just made us a little less nervous before races. So we disguised it. And, it turned into a performance. People liked it. Yeah. So um, one other question, just in terms of you know your time back on the track, is there like a favorite race or favorite moment or favorite meet, like something you could lo look back to, like oh, I, this was like the moment I loved <laughs> in my career. Uh, that's almost a selfish question. I hate to be like that, but you're right. So I mean, making my first Olympic team is a moment I'll never forget. My family was here. Uh, my semifinal round in uh, in London at the uh, at the London Games. It was the first time, you know, I, we walked us out in the track prior to the race. I saw my little brother and my sister, and they were probably about four or five at that time. Mm -hmm. And I saw them, and it just made me have this sense of pride because, you know, they were so excited. And you mm -hmm. typically don't get to see that. You know, we're out here competing. You don't get to see how your family and your friends support you. And that, that to me, that's that's a moment that will always stick out. And then lastly, running 19.6 and becoming one of the top fastest times in the world. Ever, ever in the 200 <laughs> so yeah those are those are some moments that I'll never forget yeah, yeah, yeah and of course you mentioned in your family do you have like other role models either in track or you know like you said family or others outside like some role models that really guided you getting into the sport and as you navigated through yeah well my father ran track he made a world championship team he never made an Olympic team so I definitely looked up to him and then as I went to Arkansas I was actually supposed to be a jumper so I hung out with like Brian Wilman and Melvin Lister and a lot of former Razorback guys there uh, Mike Conley has been a huge part uh, and all of my success on and off the track. So I'm very appreciative of him. And then uh, the man behind you, Aline Francique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we started off competitors, we talked a lot of trash, but <laughs> I ended up being the best man in his wedding. And still to this day, if I have ever a problem, I call him, he'll answer the phone. So mm -hmm. I definitely had a really strong circle. Lauren Williams was always there for me, mm -hmm. uh, Doc Patton and Sonia Richards Ross. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I called them my brothers and my sisters. So nice. track family. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and then just one last track question. Um, you trained with, I mean, you come from Arkansas, right? You trained with um, you know, Tyson Gay, some other athletes. Veronica Campbell, Brown. Right, tons and tons of athletes. But one thing, I'm actually looking around at Prefontaine. I see Bowman Track Club, Oregon Track Club, Union Athletics Club. 
but we don't see that in the sprint side. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, right, you had like Santa Monica track club, HSI, you know that, HSI, mm -hmm. right. But that's kind of like teetered off in terms of like, all right, this is a sprint club, and we're like repping sprint clubs. Do you think we need more sprint clubs in track and field? I think it created a lot of rivalries, and honestly, I, I don't say I personally feel like this, but I definitely read social media and I hear people say they're tired of athletes crossing the line, saying, you know, thank God, and everybody's kumbaya. So, I mean, you got HSI and, like you said, Santa Monica Track Club, and they, they used to come in, they take over, and people hated them. But it made for a great rivalry. So, I think you kind of see it now, but it's more like a coaching situation. A coach will create a club. And, I mean, like Fred's here with Aline Francique, and then Kenny's here with uh, Dennis Mitchum. So, if those coaches get along, not much rivalry. When they step on the track, of course, it's every man for themselves or every woman for themselves, but i say it's kind of friendly. Mm -hmm. Me personally, it got kind of aggressive back in the day. I don't miss that, honestly. <laughs> I don't. I mean, right before the era, there was like John Drummond, oh, I mean, yeah. Dennis Mitchell. Right we watched some fist fights when we first came on the circuit. <laughs> so yeah, I watched some fist fights, some, some cat fire. I watched a lot. <laughs> and then, yeah, I don't miss the physicality of the altercations, but as far as like rivalries and what, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And then we had like USA and Jamaica. That was a big rivalry as well. You know, Bolt and I were friends, but when we stepped on the track, you know, everyone was re representing their, their country and supported by their countrymen. But yeah, I think it's good. I think it's healthy. And I think you'll see a lot of that now. Uh, I think you'll see some American athletes take pride in world championships being here for the first time. So I think you'll see a, some of it, you know, brought back to life. But I don't know, I guess only time will tell. And then last question for you. So, you know, you did the 200. That was like your bread and butter. Of course, you did the 100 and even the 400. You were. You I were ran more. faster than Fred Curley in the 200. <laughs> but not in the 100 and the 400. He got me. All right, all right, he all right. You. you might get a. Uh, you might get a quick sneak peek. Look, look. <laughs> yeah, you got me in the 100. Yeah, you got me in the one and the four. <laughs> Say it. You good? We already know. Fred just reminded me that I don't have any Olympic medals and now he has one in his first shot. And he's absolutely correct. And by all means, I talk trash to him, but it's just to motivate him though. I, I wish the best. So, yeah, he got me. Nice, nice. <laughs> so with all that, right, you competed across three events, um, but if you could run any other event that was not your event, long so jump. one, two, four, what would you do? Long jump. I started off as a long jumper. I missed it as I went throughout my career. But if I had to run anything outside of the one, two, four, I'm lazy. I'm not gonna say I'm lazy, but I would never run an eight. So a hurdles, <laughs> probably four in the hurdles. You do four in the hurdles? I I ran one in college. Oh, you I didn't. You lazy? That, yeah. So you were rather do the four in the hurdles than the eight? I, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where's Rob Benjamin? You gotta. <laughs> yeah, he probably would get me right. But right now, yeah, 800. I stood no chance. Four in the hurdles. I can drain for that. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, Wallace Spearman, really do appreciate it. Love, love everything you've done for Thank you so much. through your career and, of course, what you're doing now. So and good luck so to you all, man. Y'all tune in and, hey, look, you get stuff like this, anything can happen. You never know. Absolutely.